So the L.A. Clippers, soon after saying that they are letting go of Paul George, they're not going to be re-signing him, they just added Derek Jones Jr. on a three-year, $30 million deal. And I'm a little conflicted. On one hand, I kind of saw him being a guy that became overpaid and overvalued entering free agency after being a starter on a team that made the finals, but not really being like that elite of a performer ever in his career. But three years for $30 million is not bad at all, especially when you saw Valanciunas got that exact same deal earlier today, and Valanciunas has been going on the downward for the last few years, and Derek Jones Jr. is still just 27 years old and had his best season this past season, and showed even though it might have been a little bit of a better run than you would expect in the postseason. He showed that he can be a starter on a team that makes the finals. Overall, his numbers this season are not anything crazy at all. That's the only reason I said that. Like He averaged less than nine points a game, less than 35% from three. On, in his career, he shoots less than 32% from three. So I would be worried if you gave him anything more than this, but this contract isn't so bad. My biggest co- uh, criticism would just come from the fact that if I'm the Clippers, I'm looking to find as much youth as possible. 27 isn't so bad. It's not old at all. But I would be entering free agency seeing where can I find a guy that has some potential that's like 25 or younger. So if I were them, I would have definitely been pushing hard for like a Jalen Smith from the Pacers. That's like one of my favorite free agents. But maybe he's too expensive for them. I don't know. But especially after losing Mason Plumlee, that would be the direction I'd be going. Derek Jones Jr. is fine to fill a void in the wing, obviously, after Paul George is uh, gone. And $10 million a year, even if he doesn't really pan out that great for him, for them, that'll always be movable. But for right now with the Clippers, it seems like they're just hoping for the best with a Harden, Kawhi core, and then role players around them. And you've got to hope that Norman Powell, now that um, there's more of a void there for him, maybe moves to the starting lineup and could go from a really good guy off the bench to a guy a starter that could get you about 17, 18 points. Regardless with where the West is at right now, unless they're able to flip something and make a great deal, I don't really see them being a contending force anymore, even if you would could if you would have considered them that in the past. So this has to be a disappointing off season for the Clippers. And for me, I would just be moving in the direction of, boy, let's find as many young pieces as we can to make up for the fact that we've lost all our picks because right now it doesn't seem like a contending team. We'll see if they try to stick to it with Harden or Kawhi. Maybe they try and move them at some point this season. It's good to have them under the contract. So that way you don't lose those assets for nothing like you did with Paul George. We'll see if maybe they get a a sign and trade with Paul George if that's possible. I'm not sure. But right now, the way this is looking, this is just the most meh move of the day. I can't criticize it. I can't hate on it. The number seems about right, but it doesn't seem like it's necessarily changing anything for them this year. They're not going to be a contending team the way it is right now. He's not making them worse. Not going to really change where they're at in the West at all, I don't think. He's been in the NBA since 2016, so... He did take a jump this past year, but I I mean, even if he took another jump, it wouldn't be enough to be a crazy difference maker. But maybe I'm crazy. Let me know what y'all think. Drop a comment, hit that like, and then subscribe. Please? Yes, sir.